Today we're going to be learning how to solve word problems using equations. So first of all, we're going to start looking, start by looking at the process we need to follow when we are going to solve a word problem. Okay, so the very first thing we need to do when you get a word problem is you need to read that word problem, identify all of the important information and maybe eliminate some information that isn't going to actually help you to solve that word problem. Sometimes some information might be included that isn't important for you. The next step is identifying x. You need to identify what your unknown is that you need to solve for and make that x. Sometimes there is going to be more than one unknown value. Sometimes you might have two unknown values or three unknown values that are related to each other and you'll be told what their relationship is. Maybe one is two more than the other, maybe one is double the other, maybe one is if you add the two together you get a certain amount or whatever. So you'll be told what the relationship what the relationship is between the unknowns, you need to make one of those unknowns x and the other one you need to find in terms of x. So it might be x plus 2 or it might be 2x or something like that. When you are doing this step, I always recommend or I usually recommend making the value that you are trying to work out x. Okay, so if they ask you to work out somebody's age, you're going to make that x. If they ask you to work out the length of a side of a rectangle, you're going to make that x. Uh, whatever they're asking you to find, you're going to make x. I do have an exception to that rule, and that is if there is an example where you've got a multiple or a fraction. So if they say one value is half of the other value, or one value is double the other value, or three times the other value, I always recommend in that case making the smaller value x. The reason for that is that you will then be able to avoid any problems with fractions that you might have to deal with if you don't if you make the bigger one x because you'll be able to have the smaller one as x and the other one will be a multiple of x as opposed to having the bigger one as x and having the smaller one a fraction of x which is a nightmare to work with if you don't have to. It's always a good idea to avoid that. Okay, so if you have a situation like that where you've got a multiple and a fraction then that is what I recommend doing and also sometimes you might have to work out two or three values for your word problem so they might ask you they might say you have two numbers or there might be two people and you have to work out both of the ages in that case you can choose which one you want to make X and which one you want to make in terms of X okay right so now, once you have identified what you're going to make x, your next step is to set up an equation. So then you're going to go back to your word problem, see what information you haven't used yet, because there will still be information you haven't used yet, and you're going to use that to help you to set up your word problem using the x's that you've already had, the x and anything else you've identified in terms of x to set up the word problem. And then obviously your next step is to solve that word problem. Okay, you need to work out what x is. And once you've done that, you then need to go and answer the question. Just leaving your answer as x equals 5 is not going to cut it. You need to actually go back and answer the question that they've asked you. So they might have asked you, how old is Susie? You need to go and say, therefore Susie is 5 years old. Or therefore there are 5 apples. Or therefore the house is 5 meters tall or something like that. Okay, so you need to answer whatever the question was that they asked you. You need to go back and answer. Also, if they've asked you to work out two values, you need to use the x value to help you to then work out what the second one is to give both of those solutions. Okay, now let's go and have a look at our first example that we're going to do. So in this example, we have got Olivia and Ethan and they collect stamps. Olivia has nine more than Ethan. How many stamps does Ethan have? So the very first thing you should see over there is that we're being asked to work out how many stamps Ethan has. Okay, so I am going to go and make the number of stamps that Ethan has x. And so I start off like this. I start off by saying, let Ethan's number of stamps be x. Okay, so the very first thing we do when you have a word problem, once you've read it, is you write down what you are making x. You say, let this be x. Then, I also have another unknown in this question, that is Olivia's number of stamps. So now I can say, therefore, Olivia's number of stamps is, and now, 
I have two choices here. I can either use the information about it, their collective amount of stamps being 65, the total being 65, or I can use the information about Olivia having nine more than Ethan. Okay, it's entirely up to you which way you want to do it. I am going to, in this example, use the fact that Olivia has nine more than Ethan, which means if Ethan has X, Olivia must have X plus nine. Okay, so once I've written down what Olivia's amount of stamps is and Ethan's amount of stamps, both in terms of X, I can now go and use that to work out how many stamps there are, that how many Ethan has. Okay, so now I'm going to go back to the word problem. I'm going to see what information haven't I used yet. And that is over here. I haven't used the total number of stamps at all. I have used this information. I haven't used that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to say, if the total amount of stamps that they have all together is 65, I should be able to take Olivia's amount of stamps and Ethan's amount of stamps and add them. And that would give me X for Ethan's amount plus X plus nine for Olivia's amount equals the total, which is 65. Because remember, if I have a total, I need to add the values up to get that total. So the, the number of stamps that Ethan has plus the number of stamps that Olivia has gives me 65. And that, I can now go and solve my equation. So I'm going to take the, 65, the 9 away from here and subtract it on both sides. So I've got x plus x equals 65 minus 9. So that gives me 2x equals 65 minus 9, which is 56. So therefore, x is equal to 28. Okay, so now I've got a value for x. That means, because I said that Ethan's number of stamps is x, and I now know that x is 28, that means that Ethan has to have 28 stamps. And I can say, therefore, I'm going to answer my question. Ethan has 28 stamps. Okay, but now I said that there's another way of doing it. I said that you could have put Olivia's number of stamps differently. You could have said that Olivia's number of stamps was, I could have used the 65 instead. So if I use the 65 instead, Olivia's number of stamps would look like this. The total, which is 65, minus the amount that Ethan has. So 65 minus X. Okay, so now let me show you what it looks like if I use that information to solve this. Okay, so if I use the 65 to, to say how much Olivia has, then I need to use the nine more to say, to set up my equation, okay? So I have a choice. I can say that Olivia has, if Olivia has nine more stamps than Ethan, I can either say Olivia's is either equal to Ethan's plus nine, okay? And add nine to Ethan's, or I can say Olivia's minus nine or uh, Olivia's minus Ethan's is equal to nine. Either way will work. Okay, so over here, I'm going to say Olivia's, which is the 65 minus X, minus Ethan's must give me the difference or how much more Olivia's is than Ethan's, which is nine. So now I'm going to go and solve that. So this gives me negative X minus X equals nine minus 65, so that is negative 2x equals negative 56. So therefore, x is equal to, I divide by negative 2 on both sides. That gives me positive 28. So I get exactly the same value for x as I did over here. So it doesn't matter which way you do it. So it do, there isn't a wrong way in terms of choosing the wrong information to use to make Olivia's number of stamps in terms of x. I could have used either the total of 65 or I could use this one where it says that Olivia says nine more. This is probably the easier one to do, but it doesn't mean that that is wrong. Okay, so either one will work. Right, so now I'm going to let you have one that you're going to try for yourself. In this question, you've got to find, you have to find two numbers with a sum of 150 and a difference of 18. Now remember, sum means the result of addition. So if we add the two numbers, we're going to end up with 150. And difference means the result of subtraction. So if I subtract the smaller one from the bigger one, I will end up with 18. Okay, so now I'm going to give you two minutes to try and solve this word problem.
Okay, so let's see how you went with this one. So now just like the previous one, there is more than one way to do this. Now I'm not going to do every single question, every single way it can possibly be done. So I'm just going to do it one way, but do remember that even if yours doesn't look exactly the same as mine, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's wrong. So long as you have ended up with the same solution as I have and everything you've done has been mathematically correct along the way, then just because it's not exactly the same as mine doesn't necessarily mean it's wrong. Okay, so in this one, I've got two numbers with a sum of 150 and a difference of 18. So the way I'm going to show it to you is I'm going to say let number 1 bx. Now in this case we haven't been told what to find. We have been asked to find both of the, the unknown numbers. So I am going to have to use, once I work out x, I'm going to have to use it to work out the second number as well. Okay, it doesn't matter which one is which. Therefore, number 2 is, okay, so if number 1 is x, I'm going to use the information about the sum over here to write down number 2 in terms of x. So if number 1 is x, then that means number 2 must be 150 minus x. It's the total minus number 1. Okay, so that is what I have got for my number 1 and my number 2, and I'm going to go and use those to help me to work out what x is. Okay, so now I've used the information about it being the sum, about the sum being 150. Now I'm going to go and use the information about the difference. Remember, sum means addition, Difference means subtraction. So that means if I take the two values and I subtract them from each other, I should end up with 18. So number 1 minus number 2 gives me 18. Or number 2 minus 1 also gives me 18. It doesn't matter which way around you do it. You will end up with the same two numbers in the end. Okay? They'll just be the other way around because you'll be saying that if I say number 1 minus number 2, I'm saying number 1 is bigger than number 2. If I'm saying number 2 minus number 1, then I'm saying number 2 is bigger than number 1. And so it will give me those values respectively. But they will still be the same two numbers, just the other way around. So I'm going to say number 1 minus number 2. And that is going to be x minus. Now number 2, you need to be careful. Anytime you are subtracting something that has more than one term like this, you have to put it in brackets. Otherwise, you're not going to end up subtracting the whole thing. You're only going to end up subtracting the minus the 150 and then the negative x isn't going to be affected by the fact that you're supposed to be subtracting it. Okay, so it's x minus 150 minus x in brackets equals the difference between the two which is 18. Okay, once I've set up my equation I'm now going to go and solve it. So I'm going to multiply in, remember when you've got something with brackets like this you need to multiply into the brackets so there's an imaginary little minus one you can't see. I'm multiplying that in here and that gives me x minus 150 and then negative 1 times negative x is plus x. So you see, if I didn't put the brackets here, this would not have been a plus now, which means I would have got it wrong. So you need to be careful. You have to put the brackets there, otherwise you're going to have problems. Equals 18. And now I can solve. So I'm going to get rid of the minus 150 over here. It, uh, I'm going to add it on both sides, and I end up with x plus x equals 18 plus 150. That gives me 2x equals 168, therefore x is equal to 84. Okay, so once you've got your value of x, now we weren't only asked to work out one of the numbers. We weren't only asked to work out number one. We were also asked to work out the second number as well. So now we have to go and use that to help us to work out what the second number would be. Now we know that the second number is 150 minus x. That's what we said number two is. It's 150 minus x. So let's go and work that out quickly. 150 minus x, which we have now worked out, is 84. So 84 over there. That gives me 66. Once I've got that, I can now go and answer the question that they asked. And the question is, what they asked us to find two numbers. So now I'm going to say, therefore, the numbers are 84, number one was x, which is 84, and number two was 150 minus x, which is 66. So that is what you should end up with for that question. And as I said, it is not the only way to do it. You 
can get other answer or other methods as well leading to the same answer or the same solution okay right let's go on to question B question B says so Nele is five years older than Tundo together they are 35 years old how old is Zanelle? So I'm going to give you two minutes again to try and solve this word problem. Okay, so let's see how you did with that example. So in this one, we have got Zanele and Tando, and we have to work out how old Zanele is. So in this one, I'm going to make Zanele's age X. And then they tell us that Zanele is five years older than Tando. So if she is older than him, it means that he is younger than she is. He will be five years younger than her. So to work out his age, I would take her age and subtract 5. So if Zanella's age is x, then Tandor's age must be x minus 5. Then the information we haven't used yet is that together they are 35 years old. So that is the sum or the total of their two ages. So now what I'm going to do when I'm setting up my equation is I'm going to take their two ages and I'm going to add them to get 35. So that's going to be x, Zanella's age, plus x minus 5, which is Tundal's age. Now here, I don't need to put in brackets because there's not a minus in front. It's a plus, which wouldn't make any difference if I were to multiply it into the brackets. So I don't have to put brackets there, but I, if it was a minus, I would have to put in brackets. Okay, so it's x plus x minus 5 equals, together they are 35 years old. So 35. Okay, so now we can go and solve our equation. So now I'm going to get rid of the minus 5 here, take it across, I have x plus x equals 35 plus 5. That gives me 2x equals 40. If I divide both sides by 2, I get x equals 20. So now, if x is 20, that means that Zanele must be 20 years old because I said her age is x. So now I can go and answer the question. Now that I've solved my equation, I can go and answer the question and say, therefore, Zanele is 20 years old old. Okay, so that's what you should have got for question B. Question C. Here we've got Tembi who scored eight more points in science than in English. If her total for the two subjects is 92, find her marks in each subject. Okay, so once again I'm going to give you two minutes to try and solve this problem.
Okay, so let's take a look at that example. So in this one, we have to find both marks for her. We have to find her English mark and her science mark. So it doesn't matter which one you make X. You can make either one X. I'm going to make her science mark X. And then let's have a look and see how the science is related to the English. It says that Tempe scored eight more points in science than in English. So science is higher than English. So to work out what the English mark is, I have to take the science mark and take away eight points. Okay, so that's going to be X, which is the science mark, minus eight. Okay, now if you had them the other way around, you would have had X for English and X plus eight for science. It doesn't matter which way around you do it, so long as you have them correct either way. Okay, so this is, that's the other option, X plus eight and X. But I'm choosing to use this option over here. Okay, then the information I haven't used yet, that is that the total for the two subjects is 92, which means if I add up the, the two marks, I should get 92. So I'm going to take the science mark, which is X, plus the English mark, which is X plus eight, minus eight. Now again, remember, because it's a plus here, I don't have to put in brackets. And that is equal to the total, which is 92. And now we can go and solve for x. So the first thing I'm going to do is get rid of this minus 8 by adding on both sides. So I've got x plus x equals 92 plus 8. So that means 2x is equal to 100. So if I divide by 2 on both sides, I get x equals 50. So now I know that x is 50. That is the science mark. I still have to work out what the English mark is by subtracting 8. Because I said English is x minus 8. So let me say quickly... Uh, 50 minus 8 equals 42, so therefore the science mark is 50, and the English mark is 42. So now I have answered the question. So again, I read the question, I identified what x was, and any other variables in terms of x, then I set up my equation, I solve the equation, and then I answer the question. Okay, next question. Here we have got Sarah, who thinks of a number, triples it, and then adds 15. The result is 7 less than 4 times the original number. You need to determine what the number was, the original number. Okay, so I'm going to give you 2 minutes again to see if you can solve this problem. Okay, so let's take a look at that question. So in this one, there is only one unknown, and that is the number that we have to find. So we're just going to say, let the number be 
x. Okay, once you've done that, we then need to set up our equation using all of the information that they have given us that we haven't used yet, which is everything. Okay, so we're going to take the number that she thought of, we're going to triple it. So tripling it means multiplying by 3, so that's going to be 3x, and then she adds 15. So we've tripled the number and added 15. It says the result, so now we're going to have equals, because the result is going to be on this side over here. The result is 7 less than 4 times the original number. So the way we're going to have to do that is first we have to multiply the original number by 4. So it's 4 times x. And then to get 7 less than that, we have to subtract 7 from that. Please take note, it's not 7 minus 4x. It's 7 less than 4x. Okay, so we have to subtract the 7 from the 4x. Once you've done that, we can then go and solve our equation. So now I'm going to take my x's to one side. I'm going to get rid of the x on this side. So I'm going to subtract on both sides. So I have 3x minus 4x equals. Then here I've got minus 7. I'm going to get rid of that over here by subtracting 15 on both sides. Then I get 3x minus 4x is negative x equals. Negative 7 minus 15 is negative 22. So therefore, x is equal to 22. So now... I've solved my equation. I can't just leave it like that. I need to go and answer the question. Therefore, the number is 22. Okay, so that's what you should have got for question D. Please be careful about setting up that equation. It can get complicated sometimes when they word things like this. It becomes a bit complicated. You need to pay attention to what they are saying very closely. Okay, the next one you're going to do, question E. Now this one is more complicated, okay? Here you've got Tabo is four times as old as Lerato. In eight years time, Tabo will be twice as old as Lerato. How old are they now? Okay, so the first thing you need to do is when you are setting up your, or identifying your, your unknowns, identifying X, the first thing you have to do is identify the fact that there are actually four unknown values that you're going to be working with over here. You're working with both of the ages now, and you're working with both of the ages in eight years' time. Okay? So you need to have all of that written in terms of x. Remember also what I said about this? In this case, we've got one where it's Tabo is four times as old as Lerato. So I would make Lerato x and make Tabo four times x, rather than making Tabo x and then Lerato a quarter of that, because then you have to worry about fractions. Okay, so I'm going to give you two minutes to try and solve this problem.
Okay, so let's take a look at this question. So first of all, you have to put your information in terms of x. So let me just put it like this. Okay, so now the way that I've got this set up over here, you probably won't have done this and that's fine. Okay, this is just a nice way of setting up your information that you've been given so that it's easy to see and easy to sort through and see what's going on. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I've got Tabo's age now and in eight years, and I've got Lorato's age now and in eight years. Okay, so I said we're going to make Lorato's age X because she's the younger one, okay? She's got the smaller age and his is a multiple of that. So it says Tabo is four times as old as Lorato. So I'm going to make his four X, okay? Four times X. Then, how do we know how old somebody's going to be in eight years' time? We take the age now and we add eight to it. So I'm going to do that with both of them. So in eight years' time, Tabo will be 4x plus 8. And Lorato will be x plus 8. Okay, so now that I've got that information, now you hopefully would have got that information, just not necessarily in the form of a table, okay? But you hopefully would have got that information. Now what we're going to do is we need to set up our equation. There is one piece of information that we haven't used yet, and that is that in eight years' time, Tabo will be twice as old as Lorato, okay? So what we need to do is we need to use that to work out how old they are now, okay? So first, I'm looking at this information over here now the in eight years time part of the information so in eight years time i already know that tabo is going to be 4x plus 8 i mean he will be his age now plus eight years so 4x plus 8 that's his age but it also tells me that he will be twice as old as lorato so that means that i should be able to make his age equal to double lorato's age equals two times x plus eight also in eight years time okay so that's why i said i'm using this information over here i'm using the in eight years time information so his age in eight years time is equal to two times her age in eight years time and now i can solve my equation so i've got 4x plus 8 equals i multiply in my 2 over here that gives me 2x plus 16. and now i'm going to go and solve i get Need to get the x's to one side and the, the numbers to the other side so that gives me 4x minus 2x equals 16 minus 8 this is 2x equals 8 so therefore x is equal to 4 so now that i found out what x is i'm going to go and use that to work out what the two ages are so now i know lorato's age was x so i know that she is four years old so let's find out how old tabo is okay so tabo is 4x 4 times x. So now 4 times x, which is 4, equals 16. So therefore, I can answer my question. The question is, how old or what are their ages now? How old are they now? So I need to go and give their ages now, which is this. So therefore, Lorato is 4 years old and Tabo is 16 years old and that's what you should have got for question e okay now let's go on to question f emily's garden has a length eight meters more than its width if the perimeter is 44 meters find the width and area so this is a, a rectangular garden just so that you know okay this is a rectangular garden the length is eight more than the width we need to find the width and the area if the garden has a perimeter of 44 meters okay and i'm going to give you two minutes to try and solve this word problem
Okay, so let's go through that example. So now for this one, there are actually two ways you could have set up your starting part, and that is either by stating, let the width be this and the length be that, or you could actually draw a picture of the rectangle and put the measurements on that in terms of x. Okay, so first of all, we are trying to work out the width and the area. So I'm going to make the width x. Then it says that the length is 8 meters more than the width. So I'm going to say, therefore, the length is x plus 8. If I were to show it on a rectangle like this, it would look like this. The width is x, and the length is x plus 8. Okay, so you can see over there, I've got the width over there, the width, they're both x, obviously, because it's a rectangle, so they're equal. And then the length and the length are both x plus 8. Okay, so now, once you've got that set up, either way is fine. The next thing you're going to do is set up your equation. Okay, so the information we haven't used yet for what, from what they told us is that the perimeter is 44 meters. Now remember, perimeter is the distance all the way around the shape. So all I need to do is add up all of the sides and it should equal 44. Based on that, it is possibly better to use this option or at least to draw it for yourself in addition to that so that you can see what you are working with. Okay, so I'm going to say x plus x plus 8 plus x plus x plus 8 equals my perimeter, which is 44. And then I need to go and solve for x. I'm going to take my 8s and get rid of them. So I've got x plus x plus x plus x equals 44 minus 8 minus 8. So this is 4x equals 44 minus 8 minus 8 gives me 28. Okay, so therefore x is equal to 7. Okay, when I divide by 4 on both sides. So now I know that x is 7. Okay, now I'm not done because I have to work out the width. The width is x, so I could be finished if I hadn't been asked to work out the area as well. Because I've been asked to work out the area, I need to know that to work out area, I have to multiply length times breadth, or length times width in this case. Okay, so I have to know what the length is as well. So let's just quickly work out that. Length is x plus 8. So x we said was 7, so that's 7 plus 8 is 15. Okay, so now I know that my length is 15. So my area is length times breadth. Okay, so that is 15 multiplied by the width or the breadth, which is 7. So 15 times 7 gives me 105 meters squared okay and over here i could also say that the width because i need to answer both questions is seven meters so now i've answered the area is 105 meters squared and the width is seven meters okay next question here we've got to identify two consecutive even numbers such that the difference between six times the larger number and four times the smaller number is 160. Okay, now be careful with this one again. There are some things that might be a bit confusing in the way that it has been worded. So just try and sort through what you've been told over here very carefully. And also remember consecutive means following on after each other. So examples of even numbers that are consecutive could be something like four and six. Think about the difference between those when you are writing them down in terms of x. Okay, so I'm going to give you two minutes again to try and solve this word problem.
Okay, so let's go through that. So first of all, you should have found if you made the smaller number be x, that the larger number, if you're looking at consecutive even numbers, even numbers are always two apart, okay? And consecutive means that they are following straight after each other. So if the first number is x, then the next number would be x plus 2. So if my smaller number is x, my larger number would be x plus 2. Now you could have had x and x minus 2 as your larger and your smaller numbers if you wanted to. Okay, I'm choosing to do it this way. Right, now they tell us that the difference between 6 times the larger number and 4 times the smaller number is 160. So what we need to do now, remember difference means subtract. Okay, so we're going to subtract and we're going to take 6 times the larger number. So the larger number was x plus 2. So it's going to be 6 times x plus 2. But just like when we were subtracting that number in the question ages ago, we had to put it in brackets. It's the same thing over here. I have to put this in brackets when I multiply by 6. Otherwise, I'm not going to end up multiplying everything by 6. I will only end up multiplying the, six, the x by 6, and that will be a problem. I have to multiply the whole thing by 6. So it's 6 times the large number, minus, because I am finding the difference, 4 times the smaller number. So 4 times x. Now, I don't have to put this in brackets because it's just x. Okay, so 4x. And the difference, that means the result of subtracting them, is 160. Okay, so now let's go and solve this equation. First, I'm going to multiply out. So I multiply 6 in there and there. That gives me 6x plus 12 minus 4x equals 160. Now I'm going to go and simplify. So I've got 6x minus 4x equals 160. I'm going to take that and subtract it, minus 12. That gives me 2x equals 148. Then if I divide by 2, I end up with 74. Okay, so now I know that x is 74. x was the smaller number. I was asked to identify two consecutive numbers, not just one. So I have to go and find the second number as well. The second number is just x plus 2. So I don't have to show that. I can just do it in my head. So I can say, therefore, the numbers are 74 and 74 plus 2, which is 76. So that's what you should have got for question G. And then the very last question for this lesson, we have got Emma who sells 80 notebooks. If she sells some at 20 Rand each and the rest at 30 Rand each, she makes 1,840 Rand. How many 20 Rand notebooks did she sell? Okay, so I'm going to give you two minutes to try and solve this problem.
Okay, so let's see how you did with that example. So here we have got two different price notebooks that she's selling. She's selling some notebooks for 20 Rand each and some notebooks for 30 Rand each. We know that she has sold 80 notebooks altogether. We are being asked to find out how many 20 Rand notebooks she has sold. So we're going to make that X. Okay, that means that the number of 30 Rand notebooks she has sold will be the total, which is 80, minus the number of 20 Rand notebooks that she sold, which is X. So 80 minus X. So that's what I'm going to have for my X value and for my 20 Rand notebooks and my 30 Rand notebooks. I've got X and 80 minus X. Okay, now, in a question like this, this is different to other questions we've had so far. Here you have money that is involved and you're being asked to work out based on the amount of money she's made. Okay, so she has made a total of 1,840 Rand from selling these notebooks. Now, if she sold two notebooks for 30 Rand each, how much would she have made? She would have made 60 Rand. How do we work that out? We multiply the number of notebooks that she sold by the price that she sold them for. Okay, so if she sold 10 20 Rand notebooks, we would multiply the 20 Rand by 10. Okay, so whatever number of notebooks she sold for that price, we multiply the number by the price. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do over here. I'm going to say if she sold X notebooks for 20 Rand each, I'm going to multiply X by 20 to find out how much money she made from the 20 Rand notebooks. Okay, so that's 20 X. Then she also sold 30 Rand notebooks. And just the same thing, I'm going to take the 30 Rand and multiply by the number of notebooks that she sold for 30 Rand, which is 80 minus X. Now remember, just like in the previous example, we have to put that in brackets because we're multiplying. Okay, so 80 minus X. And so this, the amount of money she sold that she made from the, selling the 20 Rand notebooks, plus the amount of money that she made from selling the 30 Rand notebooks gives us the total amount of money that she made, which was 1,840. Once you've got your equation set up, you then need to go and solve that equation. So that gives me 20x plus, I'm going to multiply in here, 30 times 80 is 2,400. minus 30 times x which is 30x and that equals 1840 okay so once you've got that you can then go and finish simplifying so now i'm going to get the 2400 i'm going to get rid of that over here so i have 20x minus 30x equals 1840 minus 2400 this gives me negative 10x and 1840 minus 2400 is negative 560. Okay, now I can just divide by negative 10 on both sides, so therefore x is equal to 56. So 56 is the number that I got for x, which is the number of 20 Rand notebooks that she sold, which is what they asked me for. So now I can just go and answer the question. So therefore, she sold. 56 20 Rand notebooks. And that's what you should have got for question H. Okay, and that is how we solve word problems using equations. Now this is a very tricky section and this section in particular is one that it's going to take a lot of time, a lot of practice, going through a lot of examples to get used to it, to get comfortable with the whole process of setting up an equation, solving the equation and answering the question. As you do more and more examples, you'll be able to see patterns coming through. It'll help you to be able to get used to writing down the equation and seeing where to get information from and seeing how the, the written version of it translates into the equation that you're going to set up. So this particular section, I really, really recommend you do as much extra practice as you can. Now that we've learned the concepts in this lesson, it's important to practice, practice, practice. If you haven't already got the worksheet that goes with this video, you can find it by clicking on the link in the description below. The worksheet comes with an extra exercise full of questions for you to work on to master the concepts covered in this lesson.
If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button so that others can benefit from it too. Also be sure to subscribe so that you can easily find my other lessons and hit the bell so that you will get notified about lessons as I upload them.